Hello, my dear friends. Welcome back to Curiosity, Clarity, Empowerment. I am so excited to yet again have you on this journey with me and joining me for another deep dive. We've had a lot of amazing, inspirational conversations recently. Uh, some amazing guests who have brought forward their stories in such a open and vulnerable way. And I do believe that it is through these stories, through bringing forward these conversations, that we have the ability to find an element of relatability, maybe to ourselves and to our own stories. And when we have the opportunity for that, it really does provide kind of this amount of permission to bring voice and to find clarity in the experiences that we are having. I know that has always been key for me in my own journey and in my own growth. I was on a trip with a good friend of mine in, in January of 2022. I keep having to go back, like, what year is it? But we were on a trip in January of that year, and she was sharing with me uh, a lot as it pertained to her own relationship and the dissolution of her marriage and the transition she had made out of a business that was very similar to my own. And I recall sitting there talking to her, and I'm sure I said at a, on a few different occasions, did we live the same life? Like, were we married to the same person? Because I could find such a core element of relatability in that story that it truly, in that moment, made me go, you know what? I'm not crazy. Like, I can actually, I can see myself with more clarity now that I have heard your story because it resonates so deeply with me. And it allowed me an opportunity to give voice to my experience and then to find the clarity that I needed in order to make the moves and make the decisions that I already knew needed to be made. So I deeply appreciate when people have the opportunity and do bring forward that kind of authenticity and that vulnerability into conversations. But it's so much deeper than what is brought forward. It is actually what is embodied within. And so that's the conversation I wanted to bring forward today. I just got done writing an article for a magazine, and it was all about how authenticity and vulnerability can be a benefit in our lives. And I know that this is a, it's a hard conversation because it's a harsh term. In 2013, for me, to think of being vulnerable meant weakness. It meant showing my wounds, showing my scars, and opening myself to the opportunity to be taken advantage of. Opening myself to another layer of or another rumble of the rug being pulled out from underneath me. And I wasn't going to have it. And so I held tight. I mean, I had a stronghold on everything around me in an energy of control in order to ensure that the crack in the facade of the life that I had been built or that I had built would not be seen. And I did a really good job at it, but it also became the detriment. It led to debilitating illnesses and a many, many years of peeling back the layers in order to go back to the true understanding of my worth, to the true understanding of who I was authentic, authentically and who I was to me. I had a friend of mine, somebody that I worked with, ask me recently after going through a conversation and a small little coaching session. And she said, is it possible that I have never known who I really am? Yeah, actually it is. And that's one of the coolest experiences that I get to have as somebody who guides people through the maze of their own mind in peeling away the layers of the identities that have been built, the expectations of everybody else in order to get down to the core, to the base, and to the truth of who they are. is As we go through these journeys and as we walk through these conversations and these sessions and these guided meditations, call them in order to unravel the subconscious mind, it gets to a point where it's like, welcome, welcome, because you are finally here. And that is the greatest gift to me as that guide, as that mentor, as that coach, call it, to be able to see in somebody else the revelation within of who they really are and who they are truly meant to be. So authenticity for me 
isn't about putting on a show for the world. It's actually that personal journey. A lot of times when I hear people talk about being authentic, they're discussing like how we're going to show up in a way that resonates with other people. It's kind of become this marketing tactic or a very trendy word. And I will hear it in circles, especially as it pertains to social media. You want to show up authentically. What does that even mean? Show up authentically. To me, real authenticity is about staying true to what you believe deep down and not just the thing that gets likes and nods. Like, yeah, I agree with you. It means we're living by an understanding of our own values and honoring our unique story. And that's the key. It's my unique story and your unique story. And that's what we get to honor because it's not about measuring up to what others expect or how others are going to recognize our worth. Because when we do that, we're just going through the motions. We're actually not truly living. And you're not taking charge of the life and al aligning what you believe with what you do. So authenticity to me is a way of being. It's a way of being and understanding that innate, true value. The vulnerability, as I mentioned before, kind of seemed like a bad word. And it was something that I wanted to avoid absolutely at all costs back in 2013, because again, it was this weakness and it was something that I was not going to reveal. I was not going to show and I wanted to escape from like really quickly. But Here's what I can tell you after years of doing deep dive work into the subject, working with hundreds of people, I see it in a completely different light now. It's not about being weak. It's about being open. Open to life's full range of experiences, even at risk of getting hurt. It's not about the absence of strength. It is actually a different kind of courage that is harnessed. And it means that you're flexible enough to let life in and to accept things as they are, staying true to yourself. Embracing vulnerability is about giving yourself permission to experience life without self-criticism, without self-judgment, and to understand things more fully. This kind of openness truly enriches our understanding of life's moments, and it broadens our perspective to a better understanding, to being more understanding and connected with others. Now, it doesn't mean that it's always easy. And there are so many positive aspects to it, but we also have kind of that negative side as well. So as I mentioned before, both authenticity and vulnerability truly are the secret sauce. They are the key ingredient. And it's that key ingredient to living a more empowered, fulfilled, powerful, and joyful life. When we embrace these things, we are not just being true to ourselves, but we are unlocking a personal freedom. And I don't know about you, but that was actually, I think, my theme for 2023, unbeknownst to me. I remember early in the year, I was having a conversation with a friend and somebody who helps to guide me on my own journey. And she said, your cause is freedom. That's your cause. Your cause is freedom. And it really stuck with me. And I have felt it over the course of this year. But I will tell you what, there is no way that I could find that personal freedom without this. Without this true understanding. Because in this, I had to and we need to break free from the old we get to break free from the old, from those heavy burdens and those change, uh, chains. And we get to step into a life where we can confidently be who we are. And that is freaking exciting, if you ask me. So I have had uh, a lot of experiences, as I mentioned, not just within myself, but also with clients. So I had worked with a gal once who really took this to heart and uh, as she was navigating in a relationship that it had hit really a very, very rough patch, um, she stepped into 
really wanting to understand and have a deeper knowledge of who she was. Because this relationship had once been absolutely amazing. And all of a sudden it had shifted. But instead of trying to force things back to being the way that they were, she decided to take that look inward. And she dug really deep. We did a lot of work around peeling away the layers so that she could understand who she was and rediscover her worth. It, in doing so, in, in embracing this inner work, it changed how she viewed her partner. And it also revealed to her what she really actually wanted in a relationship. So instead of feeling stuck and needing the relationship, because I think we've all been there to some degree, whether it be in a relationship or in a career or in whatever that thing is that we happen to be kind of codependent on in the moment, we get to this feeling of like you feel stuck needing that thing in this moment. Well, instead of that, she transformed her approach and she focused on what she truly desired. And it changed. It changed her relationship and it revolutionized her self-confidence. It shifted her whole approach to life. She started interacting from a place of strength and clarity and it completely changed the game for her life personally and professionally. I mean, it was just this incredible shift to see. And what really happened within that, and we'll talk about this in just a few moments, but what really happened within that is she finally understood the truth of who she was. She finally understood and was able to peel away the layers and knew that she was valuable and knew her worth. She had a different perspective and had to, the ability to see herself from clarity. And in doing so, she had the opportunity to see her partner from this place of clarity too. It gave her a completely different perspective and an understanding of the truth that he was living in that moment. And then she could decide. We all have the ability to decide. Do I want to play with that truth or do I not want to play? And either way is okay, but at least in that moment, she had the opportunity, as we all do, to make an empowered decision on how she wanted to move forward. Do I want to play or am I done with that game? Vulnerability is incredible. And, and I've had, it, we think about kind of the negative side of vulnerability. And here's what I can say to that. The only way that vulnerability, and yes, believe me, it can be, it can have unintended consequences, but the only way that it truly does is when the underlying intention is not of self-empowerment. Let me explain that just a little bit further. When we take on vulnerability as more of a display or a show for personal growth, it can backfire, okay? So it's the person who wears their heart on their sleeve, but it's not a sign of strength. It's actually in search of sympathy and validation. What happens then is when we're utilizing it in order to receive worth, in order to understand our value by receiving that validation from somebody else, that's when it can attract those who want to take advantage of that kind of openness. And they take advantage of it for their own gain. And this, honest to goodness, you guys, this could be through relationships. This could be through friendships. This could be in business relations, in partnerships. It could be with the coaches and the mentors, because I tell you, our subconscious has the communication out more than we do verbally. So if I'm stepping into being vulnerable, but I'm being vulnerable in order to receive validation because I don't understand my own worth, because I haven't done the work, taken the deep dive in to find that authenticity, to find and place my feet underneath me so I am standing on solid, the solid ground of confidence, if I'm not doing that and I'm stepping forward to receive that validation, then my subconscious is completely communicating that out and that's how people are going to respond back to me. And it's not of any kind of ill will necessarily. Now, there are those who will completely take advantage of those situations, but it is simply out of a reflection back of what the subconscious is communicating out. 
And we talked about this in one of the previous episodes when we looked at overcoming subconscious uh, beliefs and limitations. So I will be sure that we link to that because it's an incredible podcast where I, I talk through some of these things and how to be able to recognize those limitations. But this is in one of those ways. So when vulnerability is mistaken for a perpetual state of helplessness, rather than that courageous step towards self-awareness, that's when the problems arise. It's in the intention. What then is the biggest hurdle to this? I get asked this question almost every single time I step into a conversation, whether it be for the article I just wrote or for uh, a podcast that I'm being interviewed on, or after I come off stage at a speaking event, I always get asked the question, what is the thing that you think gets in people's way? What is that one pattern? What is the underlying issue, if you want to call it an issue, which it's not, but what is that underlying thing that when you're having conversations with people that seems to be the one that people have to overcome? Shame. Shame. Shame is the thing that hands down will get in the way all the time because shame is the thing that negates our own value. It's when we feel like we have to hide in order to remain connected. That's what leads us to the inability to have vulnerability or to truly be authentic. And the reason why is because we're not being authentic with ourselves. We're not allowing ourselves to be open and vulnerable, to take that deep dive look in. What needs to happen in order to embrace full authenticity and vulnerability is the same, is to embrace the kind of bravery and courage that you once harnessed in going through the experiences that you have been through and taking that same bravery and allowing yourself the opportunity to turn back and look to go back and to sit in the pain for a moment so that you can find the clarity in the chaos of the experience that you went through. There are always beautiful lessons to be learned. I believe that the universe, that our higher selves, that the sole aspect of who we are brings us through every situation for growth and for opportunity. And if we allow ourselves the moments of bravery to turn around and to take a look and to ask that situation what it has to offer, to ask why it is that I ventured through that experience and what is it that I have the ability to pick up and take with me from that experience. When I have the ability to do that and I can do it without judgment, I can do it from a place of compassion and acceptance, that's when I have the ability to truly find vulnerability because that vulnerability is the strength. That vulnerability is the ability to fully be able to embrace all of life's experiences, all of them not just the beautiful ones, but the ones that hurt like hell too. Because if I have the ability to embrace the ones that hurt like hell, I can more embrace and enjoy the ones that bring me the excitement and the happiness and the pure joy that I'm looking for. We have to be vulnerable enough with ourselves in order to be able to find that kind of of authenticity. And when we do, I got to tell you what, most amazing gifts, the most amazing gifts will come from this. Healing comes from this first and foremost. We have the ability to finally and to be able to heal from the experiences that we have been through. And it's not going to take years of talk therapy to navigate. If we can truly embrace that bravery, if we can stand in courage, if we can take a look back with the right guide to be able to walk alongside us and to help us to see the beauty in the destruction, to find the clarity in the chaos, then we have the ability to be able to pick those pieces up and to move forward unburdened and unburdened by the tragedies of the past that we continue to carry with us because we're too damn afraid to unpack them. We're going to have that acceptance. And it's a deep acceptance of ourselves, of our personal journeys, and it's allowing us to gain a profound understanding of our own truth and worth. It's the acceptance. Because this self-acceptance opens us up to truly, truly be able to appreciate others. 
and we get to see them beyond their external expressions to the value inherent in every single individual. I no longer see them in criticism. I see them in wholeness because I no longer see myself in criticism, but I see myself in wholeness as well. Wisdom is going to come. Like that deep inner knowing, we all have the answers that we want within. I've been getting asked this question a lot as it pertains to coaches and masterminds and uh, who is it that I should work with and and should I step in and and hire this coach because I need to understand the strategies and how to get to what it is that I truly desire. And my question back is always this, what is it that you truly desire? Like if you know deep down in the core of your being, this is exactly what I want to do. This is authentically me. This is the conversation that I need to have, that I want to have. Then absolutely step forward to find strategy. But I'm going to tell you, if you have the clarity to know the path and to know the passion and the, to know the direction to go, that wisdom on the strategy and the steps to take, that's going to arise from within you. It's going to arise from within you. Yes, you can hire out and you can step into a uh, relationship with a coach in order to find those strategies, but you have to know, you have to be aligned with that inner truth before you do that. Because I tell you what, you can get thrown off course too easily. Well, when we have this authenticity and this vulnerability, we peel away the layers of the expectations. We peel away the, I truly care about what you think of me. And we get to the layer of, don't care, don't give a shit. Like, this is who I am and I'm going to show up as I am. And I'm going to have the conversation that feels the most authentic to me. Because honest to goodness, if it feels the most authentic to me, then that's the conversation that needs to be had. And that's the wisdom that arises. It's the thing that's always been inside us, but it's waiting to be accessed. I can now tell you, I look back over the course of my life and this thread, like this golden thread of conversation, of purpose and passion has been there the entire time. That wisdom has always been there. I just simply needed to peel away the layers and I needed to get vulnerable enough with myself in order to be able to accept myself so that I could truly be able to see it. And this gives us then the confidence, the confidence to take the path before us and to make the decisions that we want to make. And the kind of confidence that comes from this, from this true knowing, from this understanding is a resilient confidence. And I say resilient confidence because confidence can be shaky. I mean, we've heard that, but the confidence can be shaky when I am leaning on outside validation of self in order to understand the confidence within me. Resilience, com resilient confidence comes from knowing me, comes from understanding the deep value of who I am, from knowing that I've always got my back. And I stand solidly on the footing of my own foundation. I'm no longer standing on the foundation of society's expectations. And when I'm standing solidly on my own footing, the rug can't be pulled out from underneath me. That's a resilient confidence. That's the kind of confidence, quite honestly, that I'm moving into 2024 with, that I'm moving into every year from here on out with, is this resilient confidence and this understanding and this full acceptance and understanding of who I am. Because in that, I can also then bring forward a compassion, a deep compassion, not just of myself, but of those around me. A deep compassion and an understanding because the more I know me, the more I know you. And I know you because we're one. You're a reflection of me and I'm a reflection of you. And so I have the opportunity to be able to see you from a whole different perspective, from a perspective of truth of understanding, of pure compassion, because that's the opportunity we have and the ability that we have to be able to see ourselves, the lens that we get to see ourselves through when we do open ourselves to that inner journey and to that understanding of who we are. Authenticity and, and vulnerability, like I said, they're key. 
uh, I think they are truly part of the fabric of life. And I think that by embracing these and by stepping forward into a world where we are being, not doing, not showing, I'm not showing up and being authentic in order to be relatable to you. I am actually just showing up and being. And in that being, you're going to find relatability. It goes back to the very beginning when I was sharing the story about the girlfriend of mine who was sharing her story with me. And it was just in her authenticity and vulnerability in that moment and her sharing her experience with me because she was sharing it from a place of being healed. She was sharing it from a place of power, not from a place of I need your sympathy or I need you to validate my decision so that I can fully feel uh, confident in the decision that I made. She was sharing it from a place of power, from a, you know what, I've been there. I've been there and I want to show you the way. And that, I believe, is the true feeling that not only comes to us, but also gets to extend out from us, where others can find the relatability within our stories, within our way of being within the way that we just show up and we shine our light and we mentor into this world. And then it brings them forward in this permission and this understanding of who they are. And it gives voice to their story and it allows them the opportunity to be able to heal and then to be able to share their story forward. And then in that, we create communities that heal. And we allow generations to heal beyond. I love this conversation. And I, I think... I hope that you can find a nugget or two to take away within this. It's really just an acceptance. It's an acceptance of who we are in every given moment. And it's an acceptance for where you are now and acceptance from where you have been. Because every decision that you have made is just simply a beautiful reflection of who you're destined to be. And I'm excited to see what that journey unfolds for you. Thank you so much for joining me for this conversation today. Uh, I so appreciate you being here with me. And if you are ever looking to, or if you are in the process of really trying to understand and open up that deep level of understanding for yourself, of finding that authenticity of bringing forward the healing so that you can align with your truth, so that you can align with your purpose and passion and be able to step forward in clarity, then reach out. I do have a couple of coaching spots available. And quite honestly, this is just my passion. It is the thing that I love to do. I love to walk alongside and guide individuals back into their truth and to a deep understanding of their own identity. So please reach out. I would love and I would welcome a conversation. And until next time, I hope you have an amazing next couple of weeks and you feel ready and empowered for the journey of 2024.